Hello and welcome. I've got some books today. This is my February book review and I've got seven books that we're going to have a little look through. So let me move these to one side and we can start with the Chinese Brush Painting Bible and it says here over 200 motives with step-by-step illustrated instructions and it's by Jane Dwight. All of these books I will put links to below. So let's get a flavour for this book. We've got our contents here and we've got an introduction, we've got Chinese painting styles and then we've got materials and techniques. So several different ones there and then we've got the motif um, directory. So this is a nice um, ring bound book and the illustrations are just beautiful. So a little bit about the Chinese painting styles. Hold on, let's move you a little bit, go like that. Materials and techniques. But I think the more interesting thing really Oh, Chinese colours. You don't have to use the Chinese um, brushes and the Chinese paints and colours particularly. I've been doing some, using some of the motifs in my One Sketch a Day diary that I'm doing. But this is our motif directory and you can see they've obviously got the four gentlemen as they're called. Then we've got some flowers, we've got some fruit and vegetables, we've got some insects, animals, Chinese zodiac, birds, fish and crustaceans, we've got landscape elements, we've even got people, then we've got some compositions and here we are with our first one, the first of the four gentlemen which is bamboo, so you can see that it even gives you the direction to stroke your brush through. Um, it breaks it down so that eventually you end up with this. And when you look, let's just take maybe a flower of some kind. Maybe let's take this pansy for example. So you can see you've got these directions that you go in um, to get your pansy. Here's a hydrangea, so it shows you how to do the small flowers, the leaves, the stalks or the stems, and then how to pull it all together here. Um, let's have a little look at what have we got here? We've got grapes, so that gets broken down. We've got strawberries. I just think, let's get to some, anim some animals maybe. Here we go, look, we've got a rabbit. And it's all very simplified and lovely. I like the fact that here we've got the tiger, but we, we on each one you've even got the colours that have been um, used, which is rather beautiful. Um, here we've got some birds, we've got a crane, and those are the colours, and here's a little sparrow. All broken down. So when you think that you have got, here's a teasel. I'm breaking that one down together with all of the colours. You've got pine needles. Isn't that lovely? I just think here we've got some some people. Someone on a rock, a couple in conversation. Uh, 
and then we've got some compositions like grapes in a basket here we've got a Pekingese dog and a butterfly so um, it just gives you an idea I mean I'm not going to go through all 200 um, to try and get the shine off not trying to get um, you know go through all 200 motifs but it is a beautiful um, book we've got some other motifs on the back here panda and a mouse this looks like a goldfish we've got a person and a little lizard and there we've got a little mallard but it is a really lovely book and um, I love the way that it breaks down doing things into quite simple strokes so that's my first book that I'm showing you for February my next one is called we're still getting that shine aren't we let's just move that slightly there we go the Teo of Watercolour, A Revolutionary Approach to the Practice of Painting by Jean Carbonetti. So let's see what we've got in here. We have got an introduction. We've got centering, balance, deliberateness playfulness, flow, the teo of tools, effortless effort and conclusion, the practice of painting. So look at this. Just jumps out. I mean, it's just joyful. Beautiful. Gives you a little bit about the meaning of teo as well. But look. Those of you that like colour are probably going to really quite enjoy this book. It even tells you how to use this book. Centering. Rather abide at the centre of your being for the more you leave it, the less you learn. Mm. There. If you like painting loosely, then this is probably focus. Um, probably going to be something that you might really like that could, you know, if, if you're wanting to do things very mindfully. And, um, oh, just look. Here we've got balance. Oh, wow. Composition, ruffling, I'm not sure what that means, but um, anyway, there we go. That is just gorgeous. Those flowers in a vase there. Bold landscapes, deliberateness. Technique of blended wet. Oh, you see, because they're not overworked and we're letting the paint do its own thing, I think these are rather stunning, these illustrations in here. And maybe that's something that you want to look into. Maybe you want to, um, you know, get a little bit more looser um, do things where we're allowing the paint to do its thing a little bit more this is dynamic still life then we've got flow oh, gorgeous then we've got the bamboo again we've got texture a little bit on texture Wet glazing with soft splatter. Summer orchard. There. Rather lovely. Anyway, um, that's a 
Oh, I remember having a go at that one myself. Yes. And by the way, if there's anything in these books that I show you that you want me to have a go at um, and, and do as a video, then um, just put it in the comments below. So there we go, the Teo of watercolour. What have we got next? Still in the same theme at the moment, we've got the Spirit of the Brush. Chinese brush painting techniques, simplicity, spirit and personal journey. Sung Suk Hong Seton is the author. And I just love. Look at the movement in that on that front cover there. It's beautiful. So let's see what we have in this one. We have an introduction. Spirit in Search of Chi, Tools and Materials, Basic Techniques, and then we've got Spring, Summer, Fall and Winter, and then Painting Music, paint, Mounting Paper, Name and Mood Seals. We've got a bit of a gallery and conclusion and resources. So, here we go. Look at this. Wow. Oh, that's the one that's on the front cover. We've got little um, dragonflies and things there. That's our bits on materials and things. Basic use of the brush. And you can see practice using your brush. But as I said, you don't necessarily have to use these brushes. Um, you can use what you have and play with those. We've got the Four Nobles again in here. There we go. Chrysanthemum. Branches and trunks. Wow. Trees in the distance, rocks and mountains. I love how they do these rocks and mountains. Look at that. Now that's not a boring mountain, is it? I mean, that's got some colour in it and yeah, beautiful. So... Moving on, we've got spring, a little bit of spring there, a little bit of summer here. As I said, I'm flicking through here because we've got seven books to have a little look at. Park and city views even. Misty, windy, stormy day. Painting music. Wow. What a lovely idea. Put the music on and paint how it makes you feel and then we've got a little bit um, around materials here and we've got a little bit of a gallery oh look at these I love this idea I really want to have a have a go allow myself to explore this a bit more so there's the spirit of the brush now let's move on to something different. Okay, I'm going to move that out of the way. This is Painting Watercolour Trees the Easy Way by Terry Harrison. And this, oh, look at that. We have got an introduction, simple trees, moving on, and then trees in the landscape. So, there's some materials here. Now, some of you might recognise the fact that I've got some of these Terry Harrison brushes. So, is that one of Terry Harrison? Yes. 
let me see if I can just find some of my Terry Harrison brushes. Well, I found three. So you can see here I've got the Golden Leaf, as it's called. And you can see that one in the picture there. Then we've got the... Where is it? Oh, this is the Foliage PX which yeah is well it's in there but you can't really see it as well um, and that's one with a bit on the end you can see I've got the fan one there what does he call his fan fango <laughs> fango px px must stand for perspex maybe um, that one's got the, the hook on the end as well. So I've got quite a few of Terry Harrison's brushes that are for particular techniques. And they are really useful. Um, here we go with a bit on palette and colours. Using photographs. And then here we've got some of the techniques and the brushes that are used you can see here the golden leaf that I talked about you get this kind of effect or if you drag it down so it's really useful oh there we go there's the foliage brush that I've got in fact I know I've got a wizard somewhere it's probably in one of my takeout kits there's oh look I've ticked the ones I've got <laughs> um Fango PX rather than the Fango because I really like these bits on the end. So yeah, it talks a lot about the, the specific special use brushes. And then he goes through about using um, uh, a plastic card, a sponge and masking fluid that never really works for me, but anyway. Um, painting snow covered branches, using kitchen paper, using mask, paper mask. Um, painting trunks, painting foliage. See, you can see what the use of these special brushes. It might be something that some of you are interested in. So, the foliage brush was used to stipple the, the leaves on that one. Then we go into some simple trees and getting started. Um, thicker foliage, a spring tree, a summer tree, um, an autumn tree, a winter tree, winter tree with ivy, a winter copse, small wood, um, and then it talks about moving on, so we've got some um, cypress trees, a loose spruce tree, uh, lonesome pine, <laughs> weeping willow, palm trees, apple tree in blossom, oak tree, silver birch, horse chestnut. You can see we've got just about everything here, an olive tree. And then we look at some trees in the landscape. So it talks about doing an avenue of trees here. And it's broken down into sections for you to follow along to get this in the end. So rather lovely. Um, mountain trees. So we can see that these are more kind of spruce type trees. Um bluebell wood and that's broken down for you to be able to um, end up following all the instructions and then get to here so it goes on with lots of other trees trees in winter we've got winter trees there we've got weeping willows and a bridge etc so there we are painting watercolor trees if you want a really good book that helps you paint all the different types of trees then I think this one is, it does the job really, really well. So, painting watercolour trees, the easy way, Terry Harrison. What have we got next? Next, we have got a little book, Pocket Watercolour Series. It's Hills and Mountains by Richard Taylor. 
and this is another one that is spiral bound so here we have got our tools and materials techniques foothills rocks huts and shelters above the timber line snow and ice and then practice your skills so you can see we have got some lovely illustrations in here and here we go we're looking at techniques now graduated wash distant hills using different brushes foothills and we, you know it talks about color in here and tonal mixes shadows backpack study it's something on rocks that's rather good oh look at look, that one as well and you know he's giving you the colors that he's using as well I'll bring that up a bit closer so um you know there's there's lots of information in here as well here we've got huts and shelters so we've got a tent we've got a mountain shelter we've got a wooden hut and then we've got cooking stove looking down into valleys I just love the fact that lots of these books have got these little this is the colours that were used and yet uh, I don't really see those colours in that painting it's because of the mixing of, and the use of those three colours looking down into clouds colours in ice this little rope study snow and ice lovely snow capped peaks and then we've got a bit about practicing your skills and the, this one yet again has got things broken down for you to follow um, so that in the end you have that picture um, then we've got a mountain scene broken down so that you end up with this so um, and then there's another one here um, I think that's it isn't it yeah so you end up with this picture here so really really nice little book Hills and Mountains by Richard Taylor okay our second from last is called Your Year in Art Watercolour a project for every week of the year to inspire creative exploration in watercolour painting and it's by Kristin van Leuven. And so this one gives you some basics and then a jump starting creativity, getting outside, making it personal and keeping it going. And it is literally broken down into week one, week two, week three, all the way through to week 52. So let's have a little look. Week 10, embrace the white space. So there we go. Instead of no white space, white space. And here we've got some white space and we've left some white space in the leaves. So week 10 is all about learning to leave some white space. Week 14 is all about black and white, for example. What else have we got? Week 21. One thing, 20 different ways. So it's picking something and then drawing 20 different um, versions of it. Then we've got exploring, um, empowering words. So using words in your paintings. Then this week 26 is all about going green. And then 27 is nature illustrations. Um, what else have we got? Painting a landscape. Landscape is week 34. Um, the sky's the limit. So this is all about skies on week 36 tackle your to-do list so painting out your to-do list 
um, illustrated food journal week 42 paint your passion make it your own and then keeping it going so there's literally something um, week 49 is capturing movement wade into water week 50 learning about how to do water doing something in four different colorways is week 51 let's see what week 52 is paint a still life so if you just can't think of what you want to paint maybe a year in art something to um, spark your interest each week for a whole year then maybe this one might be interesting for you my final one, I couldn't remember if I'd shown this one before, so I'm going to apologise if I have, but it's called Creating Textured Landscapes with pen, ink and watercolour by Claudia Nice. And I've pulled it back out for my own use again because it's just full of really good information Um the contents include an introduction, basic tools and techniques, clouds and skies, mountains and hills, trees and foliage, rocks, um, textures for rivers, falls and lakes, flowers, and then placing the human touch into your landscape. So we've got lots of different topics here. Um, gosh, that looks like the barn that we did on our... Um, postcard that we got from a fo an unsplash photograph, doesn't it? I should have followed this. I might, my barn might have come out nicer. But I quite like the, you can see the little pencil sketch. And then it's, this is the second, this is the third. And then that's what you should end up with. So then we've got lots on texture here. Lines and contours and using different pens, cross-hatching techniques, um, all sorts of things here. Um, make it really interesting to get some texture in your pictures. We've got more wavy lines. Well, I think I did show this book, didn't I? Because I remember this splattering and... I did some that's I'm now doing something very similar when I get new colours. But anyway, I will continue with a quick flick through just in case some of you didn't see this book before. Um so that you can get a little bit of an idea. Um there we go, we've got some clouds. Then we move on to some mountains. This one again is showing you the colours to use. Lovely. Look at that. Beautiful. There we go. What else have we got here? Trees, trunks and foliage. Oh my goodness. Isn't this lovely? I'll skip ahead a bit. Painting pitted rocks, stone walls, but you can see the amount of texture that is in all of these paintings that is really bringing it to life. And we've got a bit on rivers and lakes and how we might get that sparkle on the water look there <laughs> and she's definitely um, accomplished that wow I mean I know you can't necessarily see everything that I'm showing you it's just hopefully a little bit more than you would see if you were just getting a a little quick look on maybe Amazon where sometimes you're allowed to see inside the book maybe four or five pages that's stunning isn't it 
checking you out. That's the countryside that I love. Drawing in perspective. Ooh. I'm always struggling and trying when it comes to perspective. So it's always good to have that as a, a reminder. I've got distant stone masonry bridges. Look. Oh, there we go. That's nice. So, yes, I won't go through any more of that because I do believe I've gone through it before, but maybe still worth having another look at. So there we go. Those are some books that you might be interested in that I have pulled out for... February, my February pick, if you like, off of my bookshelf. I've got a couple of new books that I'm waiting. They're on um, advanced order. So, um, but this is the one that I've been using a lot um, over the last week. The Chinese Brush Painting Bible. Okay, well, um, I will be doing another postcard, landscape postcard next week. And I think I might also do a video on all of my watercolour palettes. And I might be looking and deciding, do I do I keep it? Do I not? Do I give it away? Etc. Uh, I think that one might be quite fun. Plus, I need to sort them out in any case. <laughs> so I hope that was um, useful for you. Maybe there's a book there that you think, yes, I think I might put that on my wish list. Have a good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. And um, please subscribe. It really, really helps me if you subscribe. So thank you so much to everyone for watching and take good care and keep well.